nightmare. Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture, the podcast where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. Welcome to episode 25. I spit in your grave. Revenge of Jennifer Hill. Yeah. Or I Hate Your Guts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So numerous. Numerous. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, back in the day when that was the thing to do. Mm. Your film failed. You yeah. just released it in a, <laughs> under a different title. Yeah, because I don't think Zachy was keen on that title. That's but in your grave. No, no, yeah. he's quite. Uh, he, although he, he does kind of acknowledge that it may not have lasted, you know, I think as long, may not have had uh, as much of a. He doesn't like the title, but he thinks it maybe worked in its benefit, to its favour. Yeah. I think mm. the film's favour mm-hmm. to, to make it still kind of known around the world. Yeah. As it is today. So, released in 1978. Okay. Directed by Miyazaki. Mm hmm. Okay. So, when did you first see this film, Gary? When did I first see it? It wasn't all that long ago, I don't think. Probably like three years ago, mm-hmm. maybe I saw it for the first time. Um,. Obviously, it's had a long history of uh, yeah, censorship yeah. in this country, yeah. mm-hmm. and still to this day. Definitely. Uh-huh. Um, so I think it was when the, the the when the US Blu-ray came out and it got a DVD release, and I just picked up the DVD. Uh, so um, you've seen it. You had saw it quite a while ago, but I saw, I I saw parts of it. Um, I mean, when I was maybe like seventeen, eighteen, so maybe about ten, twelve years ago now. Um. I picked up the the first UK DVD release. Right, it was finally you know like mm. you know previously banned, and I was going through that stage of kind of I was picking up like Text Chainsaw Massacre, Last Person Left, mm. those kind of things, and this <clears throat> was one of those. Um, and I picked it up and like not really knowing at the time that it, like I, you know about censorship really about all the cuts that were made and and that it wasn't being really stunned cut things like that. When I watched it, the some of the like edits and and repeated shots and mirrored shots. Right. You know, like flipping the the, mm. the scene and stuff like that, just to make up time almost, or to make a scene make sense, really put me off the film. Like I, I, I don't know, it just I couldn't get into it. It really uh, messed up things for me. Um, and I mean, even like now we watched the the U the US Blu-ray mm-hmm. for this, but I had to look through my I've got the UK Blu-ray. Well, yeah. both have, but like for watch uh, listen to the commentary, and some of those shots are still in there, like Aye, these really right. badly mirrored, like what the hell's going on <laughs> shots um, and although it makes sense in my head now I know kind of what's ha- why it's there but like, at the time I just couldn't make it through the film like, mm. I, I, you know so it was it was years later that I actually saw the the, the, the you know the uncut film right, yeah. but I mean it, it, it's like so it's so much like I, I, I took a lot of points away from it back then because of that like NAF edit because it right, really yeah, felt yeah. like you know like the like kind of worst kind of like B-movie stuff when it's just like oh like, they've, they've not even shot they, mm. they, you know they haven't shot what they need to shoot they've yeah. just like re- reused <laughs> footage um and really that was a i was giving it a, a bad rap for something that isn't its fault you know yeah. so i'm glad that you know i got to see it uncut mm-hmm. i definitely recommend anyone who's going to watch it see it uncut yeah yeah um because i've really i mean the content is is so strong anyway that like, i mean like uh, violent and you know the, the violence is so strong whether it's cut or not it's just really the quality of the film that's hurt by the cuts, you know, because yeah. you're still getting the what's happening, you know, the gist mm-hmm. of what's happening. So, yeah, so uh, I'd agree it's probably a classic of it of the genre. Yeah, definitely. Say, um, this well, was after Last House, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, Last House was like seventy four or something, wasn't it? I think so. Then mm. obviously Virgin Spring mm-hmm. before yep. that. Um, but uh, it's, it's quite an unusual film and how it's received and the fact that it can be understood in two violently opposing ways because it's historically been read as a, a very misogynist uh, disgusting yeah. uh, film but it's also been appraised as sort of a film about feminist empowerment mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in a way so it's quite it's quite intriguing, quite unique in that way. Yeah, um, uh-huh. I mean, like, like, not really knowing much about the making of it before, like you know, looking into it for even for the podcast and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I would have, I would have probably agreed with the kind of not agreed. I would have still said it was like, oh, it's just an exploitation film from that era, mm. with not really much artistic merit behind it mm. or like you know intention. Yeah. Um, but looking into it and listening to what like Zaki's got to say and other people that 
that aren't so harsh on the film. Um, there was there was some like, an intention behind it, mm-hmm. other than just let's make money from exploitation. You know, yeah. like, like a lot of them were. Um, so it really kind of shed a new light on it. You know, and I don't think I'd really heard the story behind. Yeah. I think you told me the story a bit of it, and then I was like, I like, heard him describe it right. as well on the commentary um, behind. You know, why he made the film mm. and stuff, and that really change kind of changes, like. It sheds a new light on the film, you know, and take, as he takes it away from just like you, you just presuming it's just another exploitation. Flick. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so if anyone um, doesn't know, it was based on kind of a true story that uh, Zaki had came across uh, a girl who had uh, just suffered a rape. So went to the police, but um, she wasn't treated very well by the uh, the police force there. I'm just trying to get her to sort of treat yeah. her as a. Almost like a criminal, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. Uh, I mean, apparently, the girl's jaw was broken. They'll try yeah. to get her to like spell out her name because they, you know they couldn't understand her. We just try to tell him it, and eventually he had to just Zarki had to just interrupt and say, "Listen, we have to get this girl to the yeah, yeah, the hospital." So that that does, um, I think you need to know that to understand the film, and not to just write it off as misogynist. That I would say that tips the balance towards saying it as a film about uh, female empowerment. At the time, it uh, got some really bad reviews. I mean, the famous one is Roger Ebert's mm-hmm. review. Did you look at that? So I I, I heard like, right. it being described, but I never read. Yeah, I don't know if I want to get into it because it gets every uh, all the stuff I was looking up. It was mentioned in Ebert's review, right? Just because it's such a touchstone, yeah, for like the the two camps. But um, he just said stuff like it's a vile bag of garbage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, just saying. Yeah, he was quite influenced by the the crowd. The, the audience that he saw it with uh-huh. saying like me, 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 the male audience members were cheering on the rapists and stuff like that so he's kind of um, based his view of the, the film on that which I don't know if that's quite representative well that's I mean I think it was Zaki that was saying that it's like well like when guys especially like teenage guys when they're uncomfortable but with yeah. subject matter mm-hmm. they tend to like make fun of it and you know, and have a laugh at things mm. um, when it becomes too, you know, too close to home or like scary through the kind of realness of of what's happening. Yeah. Um, I would I would definitely agree with that, and I think that's that's what's been happening. It's like, it is it's really like I, I seen it in its full uncut um, state. I mean, it's still an uncomfortable film to watch, but that's what he said as well. He's, he said it's a movie about rape and revenge. What were you expecting to be entertained and then have like a right. fun filled yeah. couple of you know <laughs> almost two hours or whatever? It's like yeah, well exactly. You know, it's it's what we said about like, irreversible and stuff like that. It's not meant to be easy to watch. Right? Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Also, what would you, what would you like take from the, the comments um, like for and against the, the male gaze? You know, they talk about. Um, I mean, less, but maybe someone sent before. I, I don't know. I, w- I wouldn't necessarily say it was said it was one of the you know that it was really bad for that, right? Like sexualizing the characters or anything like that. There are a few scenes in it where, it, you know, maybe like, like the bathtub scene before that and stuff like that. It's, mm. it, but I mean, is I think Zaki again said like, or was it uh, Joe Bob Briggs? It said like when. When she goes for the swim at the beginning of the film, Aye. like she strips off into yeah. the river, and it's like the widest angle possible. Yeah, definitely. And if it, if it was going to be like, like exploitative, exploitative on about the woman mm. and you know in the nudity and stuff, like that, it would have been right in her face. Yeah. or other places, um, which it isn't. You know what I mean? And it's true. The film is definitely from her point of view. Yeah. You know. Um, I would agree with that. Um, I mean, in terms of the male gaze, I would probably say you can maybe still criticise it for that because it is pretty much still standard camera setups and that, mm-hmm. I think. <clears> but um, because it's got a female lead, some, you could say, right, okay, that's a feminist film. But you could also say that it's, to some extent, it's not because it's just taking the male hero archetype and switching gender. Mm. Um, whereas some, I think like Laura Mulvey would say that a feminist film is a film that rejects the form of traditional cinema so you have to do different things like okay. something like uh, the film Jean Deal Man which is like a four hour movie and it's really long takes in the day in the life of this housewife okay. um, 
So it's really kind of it's like a minimalist style. Um, so I guess, yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah, definitely Zaki, he's not leery with his camera for no, the most part. No. I mean, there is that the, the, the mirror scene like in the bathroom later mm-hmm. is one that's a wee bit weird. I mean, I don't quite know why she has to be naked there. But. Yeah, it's well, I mean, I guess she's going into the bathroom, but yeah. it's almost like to me, from the character's point of view, it's it's her using her sexuality to, to lure this guy in. Yeah. And I, I still don't know why she's putting her hair up necessarily, but but that's what she's doing. Aye. And it feels that maybe it's 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 to signify the fact that she's so in control because she has him completely like, entranced, mm. right? Like, she's completely vulnerable Aye. being naked, right? As, you know, as, as she was when she was attacked, but she's completely in control in this point. You know mm. what I mean? Because he's totally, like, enthralled by her and thinks that she wants some bad. Mm. Um, so I think that's maybe like, where that comes from, and it's, like, kind of her completely comfortable. And I think Zaki says as well, like, she looks more attractive... Uh, when she becomes the kind of like she, she you know she does maybe it's more makeup or whatever but like she actually looks more comfortable and like confident almost with herself after the attack okay. when she's decide what she's doing you know getting these guys back yeah um because she's in control mm. so i think i think that's kind of what's been trying you know trying to be projected mm. um yeah i mean i mean it might just be that because it's quite a nice shot mm-hmm. just to set up regardless it might just be a case of that was the best way to shoot it if yeah it's but again, in a bathroom again well. she could have been wearing a robe that True. at yeah. that point you yeah. know but i feel that it's to kind of to show the fact that even though she is like completely vulnerable mm. in theory yeah. she's no longer the vulnerable person she was right yeah um when they attacked her mm. yeah so ebert also said that it had he said something like uh, no artistic merit um which i don't agree with because mm. um i think zaki makes some quite interesting choices and how he's put this film together. I mean, just we mentioned the uh, a lot of use of um, wide angles and say uh, long takes in the same way that Irreversible does. I mean, it's not quite as doesn't quite go as far yeah. in the in the depiction of the rape that how Irreversible does it. But um, it's in the same ballpark, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely a precursor. You know, it's definitely yeah. it feels like a precursor to mm. that. Cause I don't remember even like in Last House the like, the rape scenes being as graphic. It's prolonged. Mm. You know what I mean. Even mm-hmm. though it's not a single taking, um, I spit. There's, mm. I mean, the, I mean, I think it's like, is it like a twelve minute or nine nine minute rape scene, or like it's lot. It's well, I think it's the longest continue. You know, mm. attack, mm-hmm. um, in cinema. Yeah. Um, or certainly by that time anyway. But it it. it what, I forgot what my point was. <laughs> 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 I was. What were you saying? But, um, oh yeah, so the, the long takes. Yeah. So it's definitely, mm. it's definitely had some sort of lasting effect that mm-hmm. has reached things like irreversible. Yeah, um, I think uh, he's doing this kind of the same thing as what Noe's doing. Is saying, just putting rape up there as it kind of almost really is, uh, and just showing it the kind of viciousness of it um, by choosing to do that to do a more objective camera work. Um, so I think it's foolish to say that he's trying like. The audience should sympathise with the rapists. This is sometimes a uh, criticism thrown at the film. I mean, I don't see that at all. I mean, uh, the, 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 I mean, they really are. I mean, the only scene, and it's not sympathising, but the only scene where you kind of enjoy watching them interact is that random diner scene that doesn't seem to f- almost fit in the rest of the film, right. where they they are a little co- like comedic, mm. right? Um, I mean, I thought that scene was quite like it was out of place, but I quite enjoyed mm. it. But mm. um, but the rest of like the the rest of it, they're so deplorable. It's like the never mind like the rape, but the actual physical violence, like you know what I mean? Yeah. They, it's just it's horrendous. I don't and you know I don't see anyone. That's why that scene with, with them at the diner is like so like you just seen them do this like horrendous attack mm. and like be completely almost different characters Aye. you know what I mean and then you see them as this diner and they're like yeah. four different people yeah um, so like I don't see how you can root for them aye um, what's, quite, what's quite interesting is although when they are in the rape attacks they are deplorable I think Zaki does an interesting thing as portraying them as quite sort of regular guys mm-hmm. Um 
it's quite interesting. I don't think he's trying to he's trying to leave morality out of it. Mm-hmm. The whole thing. It's not. I think one of the reasons why the film is such an uncomfortable watch overall is because it's it's not kind of clear cut. You're not. Um, it's not giving you easy answers to in terms of justice. I think he's trying to say about the rape. It's he's not giving you. He's not painting them as like extremely evil. Um, um, it's something that they do that's kind of just. It's just happened stance in a way it's, like, it's kind of opportunism mm-hmm. maybe and I think what the film is saying is that uh, rape is a result of a um, male social nature rather than I think this is a point that Carol Clover makes in her book Men, Women and Chainsaws it's about how they, they um, how they interact as a group Mm-hmm. Rather than being individually rapists, now we, if you follow me, yeah, it's more about because the the, the kind of classic feminist view on rape is it's not about sex, it's about power. Okay, you know Susan Brown Miller. It's more about masculinity exerting its power over a uh, woman. So I think uh, how the the rape scenes work is it's just about them trying to get kind of one up on each other that definitely rings true i mean the first scene really no one seems to be in it into it other than johnny mm. you know especially when she kind of ends up staggering off even yeah. like matthew's kind of like you said that they, like, you know it can't, it's kind of like he wants to as well mm. but he's not really there yeah in his head yeah you know like he's not kind of willing and the other characters look very uneasy about it mm. and that that seems to flip like almost instantly because obviously they're kind of planning the next stage yeah um as soon as she leaves because mm. they, they I mean they, they, they corner her um and catch up with her later Aye. um and so i guess as it's like them you say you say and it does kind of get worse and worse mm. um so yeah as it's like they're kind of egging each other on yeah you could argue that it's initiated by the, the, you've got Johnny works at the gas station and you've got Stanley and Andy who are just hanging about so they're the first ones to meet Jennifer mm-hmm. and then after that Matthew who is the delivery boy he gets a tip mm-hmm. and he reports back to the guys and I think it's maybe you could read it as Johnny is a wee bit peeved off that he that Matthew's got more attention mm, from her maybe. so uh, he's just yeah. trying to like the, the first rape is he's playing it as okay we're going to yeah, get her from Matthew uh-huh. mm-hmm. but it's that's maybe that's just a cover, mm. um, um, and also interesting. Something that Zaki does in the rape scenes is um, he'll cut to the cut to the four guys, and he'll do individual close ups. And in those close ups, they're very anxious mm-hmm. when he shows them alone. Like they're not quite comfortable mm-hmm. with it, yeah. But it's the group mentality that is yeah, kind of taking you. over mm-hmm. to 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 um, actually make them do that. Yeah, and I mean that kind of hangs through to like when she gets them on their own. Yeah, you know, mm. um, it, for her, her revenge act. You mm. know, what I mean, it kind of hangs, you know, true with that. that mm. They don't seem to be. Uh, and okay, you could say it's just it's the fact that, that you know strength in numbers, but mm. I still don't doubt that. If one of them had it in them, they could, you know, they would, they would, at- they would attack her, like on their own. Mm. But it seems like that, you know, that, that because they don't have their their buddies or their yeah that pack mm. that they have the the, the the other part of mm. the film that they don't they're not necessarily want to do it, you know. Uh, yeah, well, it's interesting because sometimes like sort of a rationality or civilization can go out the door mm-hmm. and a kind of mob mentality. Yeah, yeah. But whereas they're on their own, they're suddenly like civilized. Mm-hmm. So. Moving on from the, the kind of rape part of the, the movie, um, let's move on to the revenge section, Gary. Um, so the tagline, this woman is just cut, chopped, broken, and burned five men beyond recognition. Mm-hmm. Okay, f- so forgetting the inaccuracies there, um, <laughs> what did you think of the second half of the film? It's uh, I, would, I would say it's sort of catharsis, in mm-hmm. a way. Um, it's a f- that, that, once that, se- that section's quite fun, mm-hmm. now you've went through the kind of trauma um, of the whole rape the middle of the film and it plays a bit more like a kind of standard exploitation or a slasher mm-hmm. or something yeah yeah so coming back to the inaccuracies of the, the tagline what do you think of that 
like the kind of because it's in the trailer as well. And the, I mean, there's how where did that come from? The tagline. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, there's only four men to start Aye. with, and no one gets burned. Right. Yeah, well, she does burn Johnny's clothes. Yeah, I don't know if the, whoever's yeah, what, made that scene yeah, in the trailer. Yeah, I guess I was watching the trailer. <laughs> I, um, I mean, like, Johnny's is probably about the worst, isn't it? Mm. I mean, from a male point of view, I'd, I'd yeah. say Johnny gets it real bad. Mm. Um, well, I, I guess it's implied that, that um, who's it, Stanley and who's the other guy? Andy. I, they kind of get their, well... One of them gets their bits kind of chopped to a, a, a motor of a, a speedboat, yeah. it looks like. But Johnny gets it real bad. Mm. Not the way you want an interval. Um, that's, that's a hard scene to watch. It is. <laughs> it is and it's like, not, you don't see anything, really, other than sports of blood. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very... Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the kind of... What you want for your special effects, isn't it? Because like, mm. like, if you'd seen anything, I don't think it would have been as necessarily but, but it would have worked but it would right. have looked for that day and age, era i don't think they'd have pulled it off very well mm-hmm. um and that shot of him like well her like sitting in the living room herself mm-hmm. listening to the, the 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 music yeah um and him screaming up to the name just that cold shot of him at the bottom of the stairs oh yeah that's, mm-hmm. that, that, that that was kind of a really effective shot mm-hmm. for me um but you feel like that should have been the kind of end of the film I think okay. a couple of people mentioned that 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 because Johnny was the kind of the leader, wasn't he? So kind yeah. of feel that he should have been last to get it, mm. um, and that was kind of quite a would have been quite a a strong ending as yeah. well, I guess. Um, how about Matthew? How do you think he went out? Do you think that was? Yeah, well, there's some debate as to say how how culpable was Matthew. That's true. You said um, that. Um, I would, yeah. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> no, no. I, I love how they all, everyone's, his explanations of like, you know, right. like it was her fault, like, yeah. you know, and uh, what is it? Like she she had brought bad luck to town and things mm. and <laughs> um, and he didn't mean to do it and who's, like, who's, who's going to be his friends. Aye. <laughs> um, but no, it was, a, it was a pretty yeah good death. I mean, overall, I mean, you could say, is it, is it, is the film kind of just in a way is what mm. happens in the film justified in terms of like social justice sure she gets raped by four guys and then she murders them um it's a tricky tricky one uh, again uh, the poster says N- no ju- jury in america would convict right. her. i don't know <laughs> um i don't know but um yeah i think it's it, i mean m- morally there's some justification you mm. know I, I think you know but Aye. Murder, I don't know. Mm. I think what makes me ask that question is is, is the realism of the film. Um, yeah. Because it, it's like, I probably wouldn't question it if it was like a, a western or something mm-hmm. and it was a male protagonist. Okay. okay. Um, so I think we're conditioned to it in that way. See, I think uh, it's more, it's kind of like, you know, that way, like, the catharsis that you feel from it is like, almost like what, somebody who uh, I mean I can only imagine somebody who'd been raped wants to do mm-hmm. and that inst- you know yeah. that anger mm-hmm. before they hopefully like you know can can move past mm-hmm. it or whatever so I guess that's what where it's come from from Zaki's point of view of like this is like what, every, what everybody wants to do or yeah. this is what you, you kind of in that instant you want to have happen to mm-hmm. these people but not necessarily Aye. what everyone would do yeah what they would ideally have happened to these people if they could in that instant but yeah i don't know how like, they realize i know what you mean like yeah. if it was a, a more stylized world not the real world mm. it may be more kind of easy to swallow mm-hmm. i mean but if you can say it's no just i mean what what do you say she should do i mean if you say oh she should have just gone to the police mm-hmm. um what yeah. would happen there is she's kind of um, relying on traditional systems of criminal justice, which are essentially male. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, um, there's really no female empowerment. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, rape is something that's historically been extremely hard to, to get convictions on. Especially uh, for, for people's word against one. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So allegorically, um, I think you can say it's justified in the sense of um, avenging patriarchy. I'll bring it back just as as we're thinking about this. Now, we said that like, she gets raped and then she murders them. But they wanted her dead. They sent Matthew back to kill her. That's true. Mm. So they, they did. They would have killed her. Mm. So, you know. Although you could say Johnny by sending Matthew. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, conspiracy to murder still. Aye. Still, uh, murder, mm. uh, effectively, you know what I mean? Especially using somebody who, in, you know, the world of the film, Matthew, mm. you would say maybe has diminished, like, his learning difficulties or whatever, mm. you know, so that's kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I'd say that I'd say that it becomes more just when you you, you factor in that that they were gonna kill her, yeah. um, or right, just because they were pussies about it and and didn't want to do it themselves. Yeah, sent Matthew, and you know, yeah, it's quite a it's quite a difficult one. There's another kind of side to it as well that Carol Clover brings up again, which makes it a bit more troubling. She's talking about just rape revenge films in general. She's kind of saying that it may be that male guilt over patriarchy allows. Uh, male spectators saying fem- females should uh, enact revenge upon men uh-huh. but at the same time that's shifting responsibility in a way is the point she's making by saying okay. that women should learn self-defense to protect themselves from rape as taking the blame like the, the, yeah, the, yeah saying like, yeah. oh men are gonna rape you so you need to learn <laughs> self-defense <laughs> yeah right oh, I <laughs> rather than saying that men shouldn't rape women yeah. type thing uh, so it's it's quite a complex kind of it's like yeah uh, I, I totally think, yeah, I Aye. get what you mean. Uh-huh. So you mentioned before you thought you had some flaws that you thought with the film. Yeah, um, well, I think technically it's it is pr- a pretty. Re- there is a few story points that maybe um, don't work that well. Um, the whole thing, the after the third rape, where they're gonna decide to murder Jennifer, um, Johnny decides that it should be Matthew who goes to murder, which I can see kind of why you would do that mm. in the sense that he's not wanting the, to actually do it. Yeah. Um, he's just want to use Matthew as a patsy. Yeah, but, um, it's, it feels like they almost maybe feel that if they did get found out and it, but it was Matthew that did it, that maybe, maybe and maybe give him more credit here, but maybe they'd be more lenient on him because yeah. he does have the learning disability or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't seem reasonable no, uh, that, no. that they would uh, uh, it trust chan- him. Yeah, to, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> especially the amount of time it takes to fuck yeah. back inside that house. <laughs> 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 He's not wanting to leave him. <laughs> um, um, yeah, um, I, I mean, I guess that the, the, the like the way we're kind of introduced to his wife, Johnny's wife and family. Mm-hmm. You hear him talking to. Um, Jennifer about it, and it kind of comes out of nowhere almost. I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't expecting to have a family and things like that. I guess that's just maybe you don't maybe expect somebody to do that with mm-hmm. a family, whatever. But then we meet his wife and kids, it's almost as if they're made out to be like she's made up to be this harpy, like, right? She's like, you know, shouting at everybody and uh, getting like Stanley and Andy a lot of hell for weather. <laughs> um, and it, like, I don't know, is that meant to make you feel at first? It's like it's almost as if you're meant to feel, um some remorse for what happens to Johnny. Mm. Um, and then, like, I think it was Joe Bob Briggs says that it's, it's meant, now it's meant to be all right because she was a bitch. Because right. <laughs> his wife was an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> um, so I don't know that felt yeah, like a bit so of yeah, an, an, an odd, odd choice. Um, throw in. I don't know, maybe he's trying to have like another strong mm-hmm. female in there. But um, and I, I guess that the, the scene with them all at the, at the, the diner mm. and he's Johnny's wanting them to go back to check the house and stuff like that. And um, is it Andy? Is it Andy that... Andy's a blonde guy. Right, so Stanley. Yeah. And he slaps him. And he wants <laughs> him to give him a smile when he's ready to smiles. I mean, that's the funny scene in the film. Like, and yeah. it's so... Like, what, what's happened? And, like, you know, it's like, who are these four guys? Because they don't seem like the guys that just did that. But I guess that's what you're saying about like, him trying to make them seem like normal guys. Yeah. But mm. the beers are on me and they'll give him a big smile. Aye. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're all right then. <laughs> um, so I get that felt like a little out of place, but I think it works in the, the wider film. But like when you're watching it, it does like you're like what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, I think 
we don't get much insight into Jennifer's character before, what she, you know, did before, you know, like who she yeah. was before. I was wondering about that. If there was more characterization of Jennifer, would be, would it make it um, have more impact overall? Um, hmm. I don't know, but hmm. But it kind of gives it that kind of like blank. This could be, you know, the whole thing, like you know, in um, in slasher films, like Halloween stuff like that, that they, you know, they talk about the mask, and it could be anybody, mm. you know, and the fact that it's not like they don't necessarily have a purpose, yeah. almost for the, you know, it's almost an, um, they don't need to have a reason. It's almost scarier. It's kind of like they've used Jennifer as a kind of blank slate for any rape victim, mm-hmm. and therefore the audience projects who they want to project onto her. Yeah. And and therefore, when she does commit the stuff, you kind of justify it in your own head because it's maybe, you know, you're kind of imagining that that could be somebody that I know or that could be my sister, wife, girlfriend, whatever. Yeah. Um, And that's maybe why. Because mm-hmm. we do get a little more characterization of the other ca- of the guys, though, yeah. Johnny, only but Maybe just because Jennifer doesn't have anyone to talk to, mm. in the sense that that's an easy way to, mm-hmm. to get kind of exposition and yeah. things out there. But I guess it's not really what it is actually he's going for. He's no. going for a more external mm-hmm. um, objective uh, portrayal. One interesting thing that uh, Zaki does, which is incredibly effective, is having no score yeah. in the film. Um, I think he said in the interview that he was he tried like he's numerous tried different, different things, mm-hmm. um, types of music, but nothing was kind of matching. That the images were kind of rejecting. Yeah, Any. and it's weird because like, until he said it, I hadn't really noticed yeah. that there was no score. You know, mm-hmm. I really didn't, I didn't right. um, like, appear. You know, it, it doesn't need it, obviously, because mm-hmm. it didn't come across to me like, oh, there's something missing or we're, we're not being told to feel a certain way. You yeah. know what I mean? None of it felt like that. Um, and it wasn't until he said that there was no score, I was like, oh, yeah, like, cause some films I've seen and they don't have a score and I've noticed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it almost feels like they're trying to make a point with that, whereas this, it just feels like it can't have anything it doesn't need anything yeah. it doesn't seem to be anywhere where it would fit mm. um which also adds how make his one of the things that makes it so uncomfortable mm-hmm. to watch i think um because you're not given any kind of hooks to to how to react or feel um, or like have sympathy for you know you're saying yeah, yeah. Your moral judgments Aye. there's no kind of mm. um against either character you know mm-hmm. there's nothing kind of no evil like theme for when the, the bad characters come in or yeah. whatever Another thing I'd noted down in terms of the rape revenge predecessors, uh-huh. um, both Virgin Spring and Last House on the Left, um, they do something that this film doesn't, where they have, um, they kind of transcend to a more philosophical idea. Okay. At the end, where uh, after the the revenge has been acted um, by the parents. They actually, was it parents in both of the films? Yeah. So this is was this the kind of like first when it was being carried out by the the victim? Um, I'm not sure if it was the first. Right. Uh, but, I don't know. Okay. Right. Sorry. Um, but in those films, there's an incredible guilt. Mm. The, the, the film ends, and I t- tell them like, what, oh, what have I done?" Um, it's kind of that difficult idea that they've had their revenge, they've kind of enacted justice in a way, but then they've they ended up in a place that's. And, and the same kind of debased um, moral position as uh, the perpetrators mm. where uh, it's a kind of difficult kind of moral position yeah uh, I mean I violence. guess this one this film definitely doesn't have that I, mm. I mean she definitely is pretty happy at the end yeah. or it's made out to be but I think that again that maybe comes from it being like you know with the, with the last house and stuff like that because it's the whole thing like it's not going to bring them back you know with, mm. with the daughters you know Um so what they've done hasn't actually done anything. Mm. Whereas for her, this I feel like she is getting revenge because she's she survived the attack, mm. um, albeit they were wanting to kill her. So she's get, so that maybe that's she's actually getting some sort of retribution within herself from it. Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the parents they kind of they're acting out of rage and then they're not really getting anything at the end of it other than guilty conscience. Yeah. So, um, I think that's about all we need to say about the film yeah. itself. Um, do you want to have a look at the cuts that were enacted? Uh, originally, the film was released um, in the UK uh, by 
Wizard uh, VHS right. in 1982. Okay. I would say the preset version on cut. Um, I don't know. I, I couldn't find any theatrical history. I don't know if it was released theatrically. I would think I probably not. Said it, well, right, I would thought you'd said it was, and it was released um, as Day of the Woman, and it was really badly cut, and it did really, really oh, bad. Right, um, in the UK, I was meaning. Sorry, sorry, yeah, right. Yeah. So you just dealing with Aye. our cuts? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's fine, sorry, sorry. Uh-huh. So you don't think it was released theatrically over here? Not as far as I can see. Right. Yeah, and so and then it was one of the most infamous infamous uh, video nasties uh, on the, the DPP Final 39. Right. Um, and then I think after that, it was 2001, uh, before it came out again. And that was with seven minutes of cuts, which were in terms with the sexual violence, violence guidelines of the BBFC. It says several scenes of sexual violence and nudity. Um, and after that was 2006, where we get down to 41 seconds right. of cuts. Um, oh, but that might be a pre cut version. All right. Yeah. And 2010 is the most recent release from 101 Films, um, which is features 2 minute 54 seconds of cuts. Um, I couldn't find any specific cut details about what scenes but it's mostly like I mean looking at the um the blu-ray I've got from 101 um it's mostly the first rape and the the second and a bit from the third you know what I mean it's um like f- the repeated and mirrored frame um shots from mm. the first rape then from the second one like I, I don't know if it cuts out the punch you know the, he smacks on the back of the head right. but then it goes into this kind of like slow it's slow motion Oh, really? Some of it, which I don't know, seems worse. Right. I don't know, but I don't know. Um, and then like, can I cut out the? I don't know if it cuts out the line "suck it, bitch" that Stanley says to. Her, but like most right. of that, like, isn't there? Um, okay. So I think that's from from those three scenes primarily. Yeah. There didn't seem to be anything really cut that I noticed from the mother scenes. Okay just ironic <laughs> you know it's you know you can kill people yeah it seems to more just the the rape scenes that mm. are troublesome for the, the bbfc but it's one of the ironies we've talked about in the in the past that um it's actually making it actually sanitizing it by cutting it i think this, there needs to be something said about like it's irresponsible mm. to you know to like meet to as I say, almost sugarcoat some things yeah. through, like, um, irresponsible editing. Mm. And, and like, again, looking at, when I first watched that scene, the rape scene, I kind of, I turned the film off because it all, all of a sudden didn't feel very serious. Right, okay. Right, and again, I t- put that down to maybe poor filmmaking at the time mm. because I didn't know any better. Um, but watching it again, the, the, the stuff, when it flips, I mean, it literally flips from, like, a scene of Johnny thrusting, right? It's, mm. We're looking at him to the same shot, but flipped, the negative flips. Right. And and you think, this is taking the piss. <laughs> you know, it looks really, really bad. Mm. And um, as I say, it just it takes you out of it and you start to, it, it lessens the effect. Yeah. It definitely lessens the effect. Um, and you think that's really irresponsible of them to do that because it, de- it definitely lifts you out of the film and makes you realise that Oh, it's just a film, or you know what I mean. Mm. It, it just it, it definitely takes away from from the film mm. uh, and the impact those scenes have, um, which is, as I say, just really stupid. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. So maybe we'll get it one day. Yeah, I mean, it's out there if you want to get it, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> kind of bite for the UK. Yeah. You recently discovered that that uh, UK Blu-ray isn't worth buying either for other reasons. No, uh, it's um, it's interlaced. It's like a fifty mm. uh, i ten eighty i ten eighty fifty i, um, which and it's actually the, uh, the transfer doesn't look very good either because usually your TV kind of deinterlaces and stuff. Um, but I actually thought I'd pop the DVD in the first time I was watching right. it because it was really poor. Like because mm. the, the US Blu-ray is really it's you know it's pretty decent I- and. And fairly sharp, but I, I really was. I was quite disappointed. So I thought it was going to be like the same print, just cut. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely not. But yeah, if you can get it cheap enough, it's worth it for the the packaging, the poster, the book. Mm. 
I just get the US one as well, mm. <laughs> which I've yet to do, but I will be doing. But yeah, there you go. Um, what do you think about it's kind of? Do you think it's still as shocking as it ever was? Um, the film. They had just been maybe taken off a wee bit by time, but it's still a very uh, uncomfortable mm. thing to watch. I think um, I, I don't know if the, some of the film is dated. Well, the film is dated, sure, but some of it. I feel the performances from Camille Keaton and and Johnny, the guy that plays Johnny, are, mm-hmm. are still pretty strong. Yeah. Um, but I, th- I don't think anything's really been taken for me. Like, I don't think anything's been taken away too much from the rape scene. Like an uncut mm. version. I yeah. don't. I don't feel that time has has made that look like uh, softer or like like what's um, fake. You mm. know what I mean? It's still. I yeah. think it still. It still holds up. Mm. Um, and certainly the Johnny's demise in the bathtub definitely still works. Um, I still think showing that. I, I still think showing that to people. It's not something you could show your gran. Mm. Yeah, even yet. Yeah. I can ask for great yeah, grand, but I always have great revenge film. <laughs> um, but if you were like, into that with your grand, um, watching horror films, like, uh, you know, and that's kind of, I think it still works mm. and it still has an impact and not something that would be easily viewed by everyone even today. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of it is he, people might laugh at this, like, I mean, some of the kind of like Matthews stuff and right, you know, yeah. that kind of maybe lessens it, but I don't think, I think the, the violence stuff still was pretty strong even today mm-hmm. obviously it is otherwise it would be uncut yeah to be fair cool cool Gary cool right. cool cool right so should we move on let's move on yep so we're going to be moving on to the section called random shit where we discuss amongst other things news Releases, pickups, yeah. just random stuff, <laughs> I guess. So welcome to Random Shit, the, the, the second part of the podcast, effectively. The the revenge part of the podcast, <laughs> <Right>. if you're <laughs> <laughs> Um So, have we got any news today, Gary? Um, Anything interesting? It's been a wee while since we've podded, so has, there has been so some major... Be, yeah, there should uh, be, there's no... <laughs> no, there is, there's some, there's some good stuff. Right. Uh, one thing that um, I noticed was coming out is a, a Friday the Thirteenth Blu-ray box set. Yeah, yeah, I'm a wee bit annoyed about this, Gary. Not a wee bit, I right. say a wee bit, because I've already picked up parts one to three on Blu-ray. Ah. Um, and the box set look, looks pretty good. The only thing is, like, f- seems like parts four, five, six, seven, and eight are all like on the double, you know, two in one disc. Oh, okay. You know, it looks like um, they're both in they're on fifty right. gig discs, but two films, mm. which I'm not too miffed about. But um, I thought they would have, like, been nice if they'd release them in separate right. releases as well. But it's, it's in a tin, which I is that. oh, mm. that's good. I like tins, yeah. Gary. But and it's got a forty-page booklet with it. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, oh, you have swines. Right. <laughs> so you might be, you might, might be getting offered to buy my right. <laughs> Friday Thirteenth. I, <laughs> well. <laughs> I was intrigued at first because I'd held off buying the original Blu-ray mm-hmm. just because it's, it's not only available on Amory. Mm-hmm. Just all right, yeah, but yeah, I could yeah. give me a steel book or something. <laughs> but I don't know if I'll bother because, um, apart from number one, I'm not gonna watch them again. Yeah, that's uh, true. I mean, two's yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, all right. Okay. And I think like I mean, we've still like six, seven, and eight yeah. to watch. Plus, but that's a good thing as well about it. That it's not just those. It's um, it's got six, seven, and eight. It's got four, so one, two, and three have been released on Blu-ray already. Four, five, six, and seven, and eight haven't been. Right. But they're going to be there. And so is Jason X. Right. And F- Jason goes to hell with the final Friday. Mm. And Freddy versus Jason. Right. So the, the, those are three extra, well, three films that you, that you didn't get, like in the original, um, you didn't get in the DVD box set okay, of Fr- uh, Friday 13. So that's, that's yeah. a bit added value, especially for like people like me are a bit completist with like, um, like Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that because I don't have Freddy versus Jason on, right. on Blu ray. Mm-hmm. And I probably wouldn't buy that if it was yourself mm. and I wouldn't buy Fred uh, Jason Goes to Hell either on its own uh, but it's nice to have yeah. you know that way like, uh, like I'd, I'd probably watch it once mm-hmm. um, Jason X is alright it's a, it's kind of funny right. it's kind of it, it's kind of almost so self aware of a film Aye. you know and I kind of like that kind of stuff um, so I probably will buy this right. at some point don't know 
I like, I like my, my one to three though because it's kind of got versions of the original artwork. You know, I'm okay, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the, even the discs in, the, in this set don't look as if they've got any attempt at looking like the original mm. release. Um, but I think I don't know how much it is actually. Say, I think it's going for a hundred something. Is it? Is it coming straight from Warner Brothers or is it? Yeah, it's Warner Brothers that own it now, own the stuff yeah. now, because Paramount had it for ages and they... Yeah, so are, think, they, are they licensing it out to, like, Shout Factory or then? No, no it's Warner it's Brothers. Uh, that's the thing as well, with, like, <laughs> random, well, not randomly, but weirdly, it's it's going to have, like, a digital copy of, digital copies and, and ultraviolet copies of the films. Right. Which is a bit of added value. Um, Take it for all the films. Even if it was right. just the first one, I'd book you with that. Um, but it's nine Blu-rays and one DVD. Right. And it's currently going for ninety dollars, mm. which ain't, ain't bad. That's that's all right mm-hmm. for that. Um, Twelve movies. Was it Paramount that's put out the edition so far? Yeah. yeah. Um, Warner Brothers taking over. Like they they've re- not they've slightly repackaged them, just put a different barcode on right, them to have. Um, I actually had something interesting about that recently. I think is it Warner Brothers or Paramount? They've sold the rights to making, to make. Warner Brothers has sold the rights to Friday the Thirteenth because they're trying to raise money to keep Christopher Nolan in right. his deal, like for his next film. Okay. There's something about that, and it's basically the rights for the 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 next film. Oh. Like, you know, there's, there was the remake of Friday the Thirteenth. Mm. The, the rights to make the sequel to that oh, have, right. have moved, I think, from Warner Brothers to Paramount again. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I think so. Right. Um, but there was some some sort of deal went over there. Um. But yes, it's one of those. Yeah, so it's not going to be the transfers or anything. It's just going to be the same. Yeah, I think right, so. Okay. Um, which I mean, Faith I think itself, the first one is a really decent transfer. Yeah. The only thing is, I think it's cropped. Oh, yeah. There's a lot mentioned that it's not in the original aspect. Um, mm. but I can live with that. It'd be nice to see them do the three D one again because I don't feel that the transfer that's very good with the actual three D. Right. Uh-huh. Doesn't it work very well? But um, I'm sure about kill set. It looks it looks pretty cool book i don't know you got a camp crystal lake counselor patch right. you know one you so want to jump for all that yeah. with it it's all right it's like a kind of book thing mm. see the, the fact that you're getting it's a shame that the killer bonus disc is only a dvd mm. um but i mean they've all got commentaries usually on them and stuff like, even the dvds had that right and as i say you're getting jason goes to hell jason x and Fre- uh, freddy versus jason and actually, is he, are you getting the remake as well? Oh, yeah, I think I saw that, eh? So, I mean, that is that is actually quite aye. good, because I wouldn't buy that either, mm. but if I've got it and I set up the yeah. rest of them, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm selling myself on it, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I am. And it's a tin. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so moving on. Right. <laughs> um, so, like, you, you had spoke to me about the new Criterion announcements. Oh, yeah. Um... One that I was quite excited to see. I'm not a huge fan of the film. I've seen it once. Uh, I did enjoy it, but Slacker, link mm. Slacker's coming yeah. um, on Blu-ray. So that's about time. That's Aye. coming out. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not that a big fan of the film either, but um, it's, it's an amazing set. That's mm. uh, I think you get his first film. It was Slacker his first film. Slacker was his first right feature. Aye. Right, there's yeah. another film on there as well. I don't know. Um, um see. Yeah. Oh no! It says it's it, it, it's impossible to learn to plough by reading books. Mm. It was Link Later's first f- full f- length feature. Right. So that's quite cool. So it must Aye. not have been. I don't know if that was not released like wide or whatever. Right. But yeah, that is good. Yeah. It? Um, and it's a brand new transfer and stuff like that from mm. the the sixteen mil. And there's a, another short on there as well. Uh, Woodstock. Right. Or Woodshock, sorry. Um, but yeah, it does. It looks like a really good set. Bye. I, I don't know. I might. See the film and reappraise it at some point. Um, I yeah. didn't, as I said, I didn't hate it at all. Like, I, mm. I enjoyed it. I think I, I need to watch it again. But but I, I liked. I think I was expecting more of a clerks esque thing, which is, you know, it definitely has that. Clerks definitely took from what Slacker right. was. I think. Yeah. Um. I mean, Kim Smith will admit that. But I think I was expecting more of a through story mm. rather than what it is is like a series of scenes. Mm. Which I do, I do usually quite like that. Um, I just feel that some of them aren't quite as strong as the others. Yeah, definitely. Some of them are really strong, and Aye. I really enjoy watching it. But like, I get that when it moves on to the next characters, I'm like, shit. I wanted, right. I want to see more from those. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That way, mm. like, uh, you can attach to the one of the stories. Um, 
But I think it's still quite an important film, mm-hmm. especially in indie indie cinema. Yeah. And um, there's a couple other um, announcements as well. The Spy who came in from the cold. Yeah, that's an odd one. Mm. Um, it's quite good that they've done three Blu-ray upgrades uh, this month for mm-hmm. September, which they've recently only been doing one per month. Sure. But that's an odd choice. I mean, I don't think that was one that anyone, any Criterion fan was desperate. Right, I mean, right. it's, a, it's a good film, but yeah. it's a little one. It's out of left field. Um, What's the, there's a couple of other ones as well. The um, Is it La Cage of Fall? Yeah, I've not seen that. It's a... Uh, the the bird cage was the American oh, remake. So that's right. So yeah, that's the original. The okay, original, sure. I think. Um, yeah, I've not seen that, so I don't know. I think I'll definitely get the the Rossellini, uh, Ingrid Bergman mm-hmm. box set. Mm-hmm. Uh, that looks good. Um, and then there was, uh, Ingmar Bergman's Autumn Sonata. I think came out in Blu-ray mm. as well. Um, not a big Bergman fan, really. Sure. So, but, yeah, but I mean, I'd yeah. say there's some good stuff there um so I'm, uh, I, I probably will pick up slack i've been holding up picking Aye. up the dvd um not necessarily holding out for a blurry release just mm. i was waiting to you know get it cheaper or whatever yeah. but that's good i'm glad they're doing an upgrade mm-hmm. um oh just get some literally in news just now I don't know if you maybe know about this, but the the title I'm literally on. I'm sorry to give credit where credit's due. I'm on Blu-ray.com right now. Um, Criterion getting ready to release David Lynch's Mulholland mm. Drive. Well, I just I saw that just before you came. Aye. Uh, I was getting excited, Oof. but um, it's a strange one because it's according to what they're saying that it's based on that picture. It's like a uh, projection information uh-huh. that that uh, Criterion put on their Tumblr. Right. And uh, Blu-ray.com are saying that that's confirmation that they're going to release the film. Mm-hmm. But Criterion's, Criterion's Tumblr, it just kind of, it's not necessarily to do with Criterion sure. films. They put just general stuff on it, like general film stuff. Sure. So it's a strange one because I've never seen them do that before, Blu-ray.com. Uh-huh. Unless, like, Blu-ray.com's got out and in, like, that, that's been internally confirmed to them. Because it seems odd that they would do that. Mm. Um, I mean, there doesn't seem to have any, you know, concrete. Yeah. Confirmation. I mean, um, I definitely hope it's coming. That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah, like because uh, we know that Criterion is definitely releasing a Razorhead. Mm-hmm, right. The rights to the David Lynch shorts as well. Sure. So, it's probably quite possible. I yeah. mean, it's no IWA in the U- in the US. No, um, no. So. I mean, I, and I love my my studio canal, but yeah. that would be. Mm-hmm. That would be a, uh, this, that could be a definitive version of the film, really. Mm. Um, I mean, the transfer in the, the pseudo canal version is really good, but I think I mean, I think it could be a little, yeah, maybe a, a higher bit rate or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. just a little. But um, yeah, so I was getting excited, but yeah. uh, I was tr- reading a few of the the forums and that. It's like, oh, don't get don't get too crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, uh, it's, like, first time I was reading the the project, projection department, I, I thought it was some two di- criterion themselves. Right, aye. But it doesn't appear to be a mm. so. But um, well, that'd be interesting. That's see, you know, it's something that's interesting. As I said yeah. before, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm quite taken aback by that because mm-hmm. it's it's a bit odd that the you know the. Yeah, she's a reckless for Blu-ray that comes down to it. But here's hoping. Here's hoping mm-hmm. that'd be quite cool. Alrighty, so. Hi. I can stole that. Piece, sorry, but oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I think you've been seeing some of the big sale that have been having on uh, between Best Buy and Amazon. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, kind of price matching each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's over 200 titles right. at the moment. Um, are you just going to wait to the Yeah, July I think sale? it is confirmed for July 9th. Sure. So. Um, well, that's good. You're going to get anything? I think so. I, I'm, I need to check, see what I'm like for money next Aye. month, but because um, I've got a few things coming from America, my friends in America, right. beans in America just now. So I've got some stuff coming from there, um, but I mean there's there's a lot of stuff I'd like to p- pick mm-hmm. up, um, and it just be depending how much I can spare. <laughs> um, how long does it usually take to come? It's quite a while, three yeah, weeks maybe. Something like that. Well, I mean you could probably work yeah. something out. Supposedly, what happened last year is because um, before the sale starts, they do they've been doing it on just now. a uh, buy two get one free. On all Blu-rays. Oh, right. So what happened last year was some people found for about an hour 
when the sales merge, you get 50% off. Plus, plus buy yeah. one, buy two, get one so, free. I don't know if that will happen this year, Ooh. but I'm going to try it. Yeah. Just need to make sure for whatever I'm going to say it goes live. Yeah. You're there. Give me a little shout, man. I can work something out. Yeah. I'll, I'll start thinking about titles okay. just now and I can mm-hmm. just get them down to you. But there is, I mean, there's loads of titles um, on Amazon as well. But I take it, but, uh, Barnes & Noble's is better with delivery. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. I think because they mark them as books. Right. Which seems to... Mm. I, I read somewhere that books are not liable right i don't know if that's true or not no, but it seems that, that it, it goes under the radar easier than writing dvd yeah. on it or whatever but cool well, we'll definitely yeah. need to watch for that um buy two get one free mm. um it's so the 9th of july you reckon it goes yep. live the the sale mm-hmm. at some point all right so there you go listeners <laughs> eight criterions well the you know well the last <laughs> um cool what else we got gary anything um yep. a new halloween bloody the yeah the thirty fifth yeah. anniversary yeah um Dean Cundy's been in doing a new transfer right. for it the uh, director of photography I'm I'm not sure like he did the transfer for the Anchor Bay's release back in the day uh, not the twenty fifth anniversary when the it was just the, the THX, THX transfer right. they did and that's the one with the kind of blue blue tones and the night and things like that. and apparently that wasn't how it was original mm. right but that's he claimed the intended look. Um, but they had, I think John Carpenter was present for the transfer for the Laserdisc back in the day. Okay. So there's a bit of, because they look slightly different, those transfers. The Criterion Laserdisc. Maybe the, I. The I criterion as well. Maybe, maybe uh, I'm not sure, but yeah. like, there's, there's a bit of kind of discrepancy between yeah. the looks of those two transfers, colour timing wise. Okay. So they've got him in for this new transfer, so I'd like them to get. Carpenter in just to have a look as well right. and say that I know that's fine okay. you know what I mean just mm. like from a kind of thingy point of view if they're going to do a new transfer but hopefully I mean they'll get I don't know what they'll get for special features I mean there's right. been a lot out there Um, I guess and most of it will be new hopefully mm. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to be too keen if it's just a new transfer and there's loads of new if loads of recycled right. mm. um, stuff I'd still get it but mm. but yeah no it's pretty good I'm glad it's coming yeah. like it's Something. I'd, yeah, that's I what I was kind of off on it. I thought it would be like the same that. transfer as the use for the the re-release. All right. I don't. Mm. You know why would they do it? Like I thought they did like a new transfer for that. As far as I was aware. Right. Um. I mean, was that what five years ago? No, the re- uh, the last one. The last digital. The last um high def transfer. Uh, I guess so for the Blu-ray. Yeah. But yeah. Like, I thought the one that you know they released it that last year. Oh, did they? All right. Well, okay. Yeah, remember we went to see it and we didn't get to go uh, and see it. <laughs> yeah. So I thought they did oh, a new, right, new okay. transfer for that. Right, right. Um, as far as I was aware. Right. Maybe, I mean, maybe they did do a new transfer, but maybe this is just them call time right now. I, I, yeah. I don't have a clue. But, um, yeah, I mean... That's it's good. Hopefully it's a nice uh, addition. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, I don't, the, the kind of cover-up they've got for the the, the placeholder in Blue Rock, I don't really like the, the artwork, but... All oh, right, I've not seen it. Um, kind of orange... Uh, sorry. Mm. No, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, like a digi book or something like yeah. that. A nice set would be. Yeah, make it make it what even if it, what the, if that was the case, even if it was recycled um, stuff, because the the Blu-ray doesn't ha- only has commentaries on it. Okay. Doesn't have any special features. So yeah. um, if it was a nice enough set, then I would still warrant. I think I buy. Yep. No, I think that's about us. We went to some pickups. Um, so I picked up the the Evil Dead Steelbook, in the UK oh, aye. release. Yeah. Um, it was like a deal of the day or something like that in play, and it was like seven fifty. All right. So I just picked. That was it up. undercutting the. It was about eight pound on Amazon recently. Mm, wasn't it, yeah. So yeah. I thought, bugger it. Um, I've looked and I can get like trade in value from my DVD from my regular Amory copy. Um, about six pounds. I found it like, right, apparently aye. at the uh, CEX okay. in Glasgow, or it was last time I checked. So I thought, well, that's. Pound fifty for, for a steel book. It's nice, nice steel book. It's, mm. um, the 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 front art and the back art's pretty pretty nice. Yeah. And you get the uh, ultraviolet copy with it as well, which that's it's always good. Um, I think that's all I've picked up really. This, Aye. yeah, I've got stuff coming from America as I say. Like I've kind of put my money in there at the moment. I think that's all at the moment. Yeah, it's always be boring. Nah, I've just got a few as well. Uh, picked up the blurry of to catch a thief. 
Oh, yeah, uh, right, uh-huh. Just, um, just trying to fill in, like, I'm going through the Hitchcocks that I've not seen the, the films, and then I was like, there's a couple of Blu-rays there, just to get all the Hitchcocks and Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. But I got that, that was like 6.45 on Zavi. Sure. Plus I had some Zavi points. Oh, that's I went good. for like £4. Pound, oh, that's so. good. Yeah, yeah. That's, an, that's a nice, like, yeah. the film looks really good. Yeah. Like, uh, I've watched that and that. Yep. Uh, also got the Black Swan Steelbook. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Um, I'm very pleased with that. It's uh, very nice. Mm, get kind of raised texture on the right. Yeah. There. Um, the only thing I'm not quite keen on the recent Zavi still books I've got that, yeah. that kind of thing Play, Play was doing that for a well, while a lot of their exclusive ones right. like, um, I, they, I, I bought the Saving Private Ryan one right. I returned it because it was a two disc Blu-ray set like the, the original release was a two two disc right. set whereas the yeah. book only had one disc Right. Mm. so I returned it but yeah. yeah the same thing I don't really like that raised I don't thing. like it it makes it look quite cheap Yeah. but mm-hmm. is it maybe a case of just so they can um, interchange like in the production where they can, if they're doing that like a massive range of steel books they can have like press it just with a different insert or the Maybe. central I don't know uh, but design. then the rest of it's black you know what I mean yeah so. um, but you could be uh, right but I don't know why they're doing it but it does it does cheapen it slightly doesn't yeah. it yeah but I do I like the look of it it's really mm. nice I, like, I do like the writing the kind of standard yeah. of the writing that's nice Um, and I picked up uh three of the French digi books mm-hmm. Um, I got these Andy are Hall. really nice. These yeah, digi books aren't they? They're, um, they've got some uh, plenty, uh, like a bit of sturdiness to yeah. them, haven't they? I like the kind of plastic mm-hmm. inside. You know that kind of keeps its shape and stuff. Yeah, makes them a little more sturdy. But the 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 who put this out? I think they're all kind of Fox, but the Woody Allen ones are kind of Fox MGM. Right, seems right. to be. And they're a, they're a bit more sturdy because I've got the Blu-ray at the front and the DVD at the back. Right, okay. Whereas these two also get Romeo and Juliet and mm-hmm. Fargo. Oh. They're a wee bit more flimsy. Right. Because they've just got like a, a plastic oh, I see. Yep. thing mm-hmm. for the, the DVD and the Blu-ray are just on one side. Mm-hmm. And then it's like just a thin, it's got like eight pages of booklet. Sure. But, um, nice though. Yeah. Still Trump, Trump's uh, an amory, mm-hmm, I'd mm-hmm. say. Um, I was going to say, these, I think they're all English friendly. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Cool, cool. Much for the, the those, the, the, I, I take all the writing's still in French. As yeah. Much for they? Uh, I think came to about £10 each. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Mm, cool. Alrighty. That is for this episode, guy. Before we finish up, do you want to... Maybe hit them up about some of the schedule changes or yeah. we're, kind of how we're going about well, things. Well, just to say, for safety's sake, we might go for just one episode a month. Yeah. It seems we're struggling to, uh-huh. to, yeah. to get yeah. the time Although we're, 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 we're thinking about trying to do maybe some Skype episodes to, to you know, to fit in better with our schedule. Right. Um, Don't worry, people, we're going to try and make it still as high quality right. sound as we can. <laughs> um. And hopefully that, I mean, that may give us a bit more flexibility and, yeah. you know, even, even supposing we we're going to go for, like, one a month, we could maybe even bank some episodes and, mm-hmm. you know, try and, like, get two in a month kind of yeah. thing. And um, so that if we, if we don't get a chance for a, a, some reason, we can get an episode up. Um, I mean, I'm, I think we'll, we'll still try and go for... Yeah, we'll ho- do it as often as we yeah, can. Yeah, we'll do it as often as yeah. we can. Um, it looks like from the... We've been trying to get back to two, but the whole year. But yeah. halfway through the year, and we're still only hitting one a month. Yeah, through. I know. Uh, it's so, uh, t- it's kind of tough. Um, but we will endeavour to 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 do minimum one a month. Yeah. Um, and hopefully more as mm. as the t- time becomes available. Maybe we can hopefully. wait to do some more double features and stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Well, that's it. Uh-huh. Yeah. As I say, if if it, if we're going to try maybe the escape thing, if it works out okay, sound quality wise, then it means we can we could do like more episodes at once mm. or like you know or like bits of episodes yeah. and, and build them up kind of thing um rather than having to try and find maybe like two hours or something and traveling and things like that for people mm-hmm. for me and things but um yeah so good times gary yep um do you want to throw out the email address in the facebook and yeah things if you and... want to get in touch you can email us at cinema underscore subculture at hotmail.com you can find us on facebook slash cinema subculture yep you wanna, if you wanna do some interaction, yeah, give us a shout. Um, 
I'm just checking just now how many likes I've got on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so cu- definitely come to Facebook and be sure to give us a like. Um, we're almost at a certain number. Like, I don't, people can see if they go, I guess. Or, what, like, 20? We, we're 25. Yeah, 25. Yeah. <laughs> we're almost at 30. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have Facebook, go to Facebook and hit us up and, and give us a like. Um, at the moment, there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of a discrepancy between how many downloads we get, mm. shall we say, um, per episode, and how many likes we've got. Just if you've got yeah. Facebook. I'm not saying get a Facebook to specifically like us. <laughs> um, but if you want but to... You can get some updates on yeah, what we're doing. Yeah, definitely. Stuff. I mean, Gary's always there with with some news and stuff like that, and I'll often pop in with a kind of comment here or there or reply. Mm-hmm. We'll always reply to you, that's oh, for sure. Yeah. We're not inundated with we, we emails <laughs> to, the, to the effect where we'll not reply to you. Um, and you you can keep up to date with the schedule and things like that if anything changes, if there's a re- any reason we can't put an episode up or things like that, or mm-hmm. um, if there's going to be an emergency episode. Because that Skype opens us up to having like emergency episodes. It does, yeah. You know, that can, uh, like, let's say the Mulholland Drive thing did go. We could, you know, if we weren't going to have an episode up for a while, we could maybe throw up something. Yeah. That was like, going to be us talking about that. Mm-hmm. You know, we could just have a conversation about that. That's interesting as well. Aye. Or even just have that and throw it into the, an episode. Um, so, yeah. So, what are we looking at next time? Um, we're looking at, is it? Suspiria. Suspiria, yeah. yeah. Dario Argento. Mm. Um, yep, I haven't seen that film yet. All oh, right, okay. No, have you? I've okay. seen it before. Oh, you yeah. See, yeah, you say so. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about next time. So, hopefully, that'll interest you guys. Um, anyone wants to hear more of me <laughs> um, hit up uh, the Film Jive podcast the Star Trek Into Darkness episode I did a wee guest appearance in that um, Gary and I maybe do another guest appearance in that in near to distant future mm. so you can look out for us on that so is that just um, that's just Facebook forward slash film jive I think I think so yeah yeah definitely check I'm sure we gave it out last time right, yeah Yes, check out the Film Drive podcast um, and we'll let you know if we're going to be on there again and when that's going to be out. So, that brings us to the, the end, Gary. Any, any final thoughts? Um, looking forward to doing it again. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Alright, thanks very much, guys. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.